Welcome back to the 50% Dodge Team Podcast! Oh my god, wow, you really ah, like starting the show these days, don't you, Connor? Oh, whoa! Oh my god, god, if my audio is usually the one that peaks, I think it might be yours this time. I'm hyped up, baby, it's Christmas time, it's near the end of the work, it's near it the end is. of the year. We, uh, we tried to start recording about half an hour ago and then my drunk girlfriend appeared, so here's a clip. Hello everyone and welcome to the 50% Doctor Who podcast. Can we get some fucking... Cheers. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, wild drunk beep. I don't know if I could say her name, apparently. Just... Can I say her name? Uh, you can say Nicole. Yeah, Nicole. I can say Nicole. Uh, wild drunk Nicole came in and it was good. You know what? It actually reminds me that like relationships are normal. Cause you know, sometimes you can be in like your relationship and you're like, this just feels like yes. I'm crazy. Yep. And then like you see stuff like this and you're like, that reminds me that, you know, shit's kind of normal. Yeah. Yeah. People are allowed to get drunk. Of course. Well, especially at work dues. So exactly. you missed your work due because of COVID. I did. Fuck. So that's um a bit unfortunate. But hey, we are. Uh, that's, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> we can move on. Um, today, what, what are we doing today, Connor? It's the 50 percenties, everyone, and it's our look back. It's the annual first 50 percenties, which is our award show. We're giving out awards. There's going to be a monologue. We're going to rip into some people, including ourselves. So if anyone gets angry, we rip into ourselves. Right. It's all a prank. You scare me when you, when you do this kind of thing. Yeah, I know. And it's funny because I said to mum before I left and came to pick me up that I am going to start with an opening monologue, and the and the thing is, Aiden can't take anything out. Right, okay, right. Which I haven't even spoken to you about, but you <laughs> okay. know, I, I'm saying it, so, you know, right. here, here we are. I okay. told mum one joke, she was straight-faced, mm-hmm. like I told you, mm-hmm. so, um, and that was one of my good jokes, I thought, so, like, right. so, but I feel like you have to be a fan of the show to kind of get it, which, you know, your we mom's all know not? my mum, well... She she uh, she doesn't watch the show. I told her we got 500 subs and she was like, woo. I don't think she knows what that means or <laughs> what we're doing here. Subway? Sub? Sub? What? Did someone give you Subways. 500 subways? Yeah, I remember Max Murphy did that bit where he threw 100k subs and he threw the subs. Oh my God. What a waste of food. Love Max. What a waste of food. One of my favorite YouTubers met him once. Um, so we're going to be looking back. Yeah. Uh, everything from 2022. From the main show to other little bits and behind the scenes stuff. It's been an exciting year for Doctor Who, right? Yeah, I think this has been a huge year. I think... um, There you go. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that obviously, like, we were still living in the COVID era of Doctor Who. Mm. And we got specials. And I think that I've mentioned quite a few times that I loved how we got the David Tennant specials. Yeah. And I feel like Jodie really had that, Mm -hmm. you know? And I guess you can count Fox as, like, specials, but... If you don't, we got the three episodes this year, which we're going to be recapping, which is Eve of the Daleks, uh, Legend of the Sea Devils, and Power of the Doctor. Damn right. You know, yeah, I'll say this now. The My one regret, y- you always say like, oh, I regret giving this rating for, for this episode. Of for Doctor Family of Blood review. and um, uh, Human Nature. My, I always regret not giving My it most 10. regretful rating that I gave an episode was Legend of the Sea Devils. I can't quite remember what I gave it. You gave it a six. I think I gave it around a six. Pretty high. Yeah. Whereas like now I'm like, Ooh, we'll get there, but yeah, no, yeah. No, not a six. Aiden's sure. barefoot again, by the way. I am, sorry. I thought which I mentioned in the watch along. Nice shoes on, but I... Yeah, yeah I didn't. no one can see the shoes. So exactly, like, that's the point. My shoes are falling apart, so... You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at 50Doctor. Uh, this is part of our 12 days of Christmas. Mm-hmm. Uh, excuse me, just burping away. Wow. <laughs> part of our 12 days of Christmas. It's daily content in the lead up to the 22nd of December. Which I must apologize. What the fuck? I swear it used to be 24th and then it went 23rd and now it's 20... It was always going to be 23rd. Second? Okay. Because because of the way the show was working, like the schedule. But last um, year it was 24th, wasn't it? Our Christmas Eve special... Our Christmas specials always come out on the 24th. Right. But because of things, in order for the 12 Days of Christmas to work, because we our, our normal podcast schedule, it 12 Days would only lead us to the 22nd right. but in all our promo stuff we said 23rd because i can't yeah. do math so that if anyone's confused 22nd is the last day of the 12 days of christmas right um, but yeah make sure you subscribe on the youtube crispy keeps saying yeah 1000 by january 1st i d- don't think and we haven't gotten a sub all week we got one today do we yeah we've gotten subs this what are you talking about i'm just i'm You're such just, a miserable I'm chan- yeah i'm apparently i'm but apparently, you know, Mitchell Meshmi is like, why are you wearing the bar humbug um, 
Santa hat. You love Christmas. I was like, I got typecasted by Aiden. Well, because you've been Apparently bar I'm humbug. miserable on the podcast. You are. And I'm, I love Christmas. Yeah, I got put in the bar humbug. Oh, that is one note. That is one note. Mm-hmm. This is, uh, okay, I need to get a bit crazy. Let me loosen up. Okay. This is, uh, this is now unhinged, Aiden. Okay. Because Connor, I'm yet to see it. The last few weeks has said that I'm a bit particular on the show. Not last few weeks. The Sorry, whole fucking time I've known you. Forever, I've been a bit particular. Yeah. <laughs> so I've decided that I'm going to be less particular. You're not going to even recognise me. I'm going to be so unparticular. I'm going to be. I'm just going to be loose. I don't care. Well, easy. Directors easy. are particular. Hey. No, what? I think I come off more particular on the show because I'm the one doing all the tech stuff and I do the uh, editing so I know what works and what doesn't. I know that, I know that. But I don't care. But I don't care about that stuff because I'm, I'm not particular. I'm the producer of the fun stuff, apparently. I'm writing monologues, I'm writing uh, That sounds like something nominees. Matt Smith would say. I'm <laughs> like shows like the, the psychic paper and they're like, producer it's of fun. It's the fun stuff. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm like the fun stuff guy. You know, I'm well, the producer you can of call that. Me, you can call me Mr. Unparticular. I'd All happily right. help more behind the scenes. Like, mm. once we get a... I think a, I'm just quite particular about things, so uh, that's why... Well, you know. I want to be the sound guy when we get the roadcaster. Oh, God. And I want to be on the sound bites. We're not doing so. sound bites. Yeah, we are. We're, no, literally, yeah, I don't we, want... If you're going to no, do sound no, bites... No, no, listen. I hate me sound out. bites. No, yeah. no yeah. good podcast has them. The podcast I listen to has sound bites, and they're fantastic. Well, I don't like the podcast you listen to. You haven't listened to it. I know, but I don't like the guy. You don't like Ethan. That's fair. I don't know anything about him. To a, be lo- fair. a lot. Of- I remember one night we were watching Dan Mace at my house, right? And um, I made fun of Dan Mace, and you were like, "You yeah, well, look at this guy. You like he's an idiot." And it was <laughs> Ethan, and I was like, "Okay, it's kind of funny because you haven't watched anything about him." But mm. no, look, I understand sound bites can be too you, overpowering. You can use like two an episode. You, you, I, I um, think two is not enough. Maybe three. I'm going to push it and say five. And they cannot be over the top of when we're talking. That's the thing that gets me. Okay. You Aiden, can't interrupt. Okay. What Aiden is trying to say is mm-hmm. that on my old podcast, you I just, apparently spammed it too much. You do. Okay. All right. <laughs> I've never hit Aiden up with a complaint about anything. Well, apparently I'm Mr. Done. Fucking Particular. I'm really um, not helping this situation. Yeah, I? literally. I'm like, okay, it. like that's a bit hurtful, but well, that's all right. No, we've, this is old news. But like, you know. You know, I'm going to bring in some sound bites. You're going to be like, why are you going to put them in there? Mm-hmm. Like the eagle, the Gah! Like, you know, you're going to be like, why is that in there? Okay. But yes, I will. when you talk, I, I'm i going to be convinced that once you hear that sound bite while you're talking, you're going to love it. I don't know about that one. I hate sound bites. Why do you hate sound One podcast don't I Zach listen to Braff's uses them. Do so yeah. And that's, yeah. The one I was going to say, the one that uses them. They have some funny bits because they're sayings that they've said on the show. That's like, the thing, like, we can, we can, I can do that. There's I can, clips of, I like, what that. I'm saying. Everybody loves a bit of ass play, and I think that's funny. Exactly. I can, I can, look at all the dumb shit we've said on this show. Yeah. There's but they, they only use the it, like, Bible. twice an episode. Like, what, the same soundbite? No, just any sound bites, And there'll be a lot of episodes where they don't use them at all. Okay. So, because they're, they're funny, use sparingly sound bites. I guess, like, the two inspirations of shows that I get inspired from is a tree podcast and the howard stern show and like the sound bites kind of got popular through the howard stern show right and that's what inspired a tree podcast which then has sound bites so i feel like you know part of me wants to bring in the inspiration i also respect it's your show but you listened to me before you were like let's have headphones and i was like i'm not wearing headphones fine the agreement is no, no, no headphones. No, 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 no. That's a completely different thing. <laughs> headphones suck. They, who wants to see you these big, fucking bulky? Literally, ass? everyone. I went on a works podcast on once, and I had the headphones, and I literally said, "Can I take these off?" I was like, "I don't use them." Like, why do I have headphones on? I can hear you. You're sitting across the fucking <laughs> table from me. Anyway, that's me saying I want to be the sound guy, and I don't want to wear headphones. So that yeah, exactly. That shows you what annoying. kind of sound guy I am. Mate. All right, yeah, you can play the intro. Can I play the intro? You can. Can I, Mr. Sound fucking guy? Can I play the intro? Well, it's up to you. Well, I'll do it. We'll, uh, we'll this will be it. me. This will be my job in the future. Oh, no. 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50 percent. Pop, 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 ca, ca, ca. You can't take the intro playing away from me. You can press it, but, you know, I am the sound We guy. can do it together. We can, like, hold well, hands. Hold and hands. Just, and like, boop. Dock fingers and... And dock. 
Yeah. Other, other things. <laughs> yeah. We, you know, eventually we'll get comments that like, are we together? Like, no, we're not. We're just good friends, you know? Like, we'll get comments about that. But mm-hmm. like, you know, just because we seem like, apparently, according to Nicole, Aiden says that he loves me. Yeah, but, which I've never said. I'm not an emotional man. You're not. I actually I'll, am, but I'm not to you for some reason. <laughs> I literally like I, I, no no but I would like just not to your face if you know what I mean no nah, I, I know I know you care mm. like literally my, my parents will say shit about Dan Mitch they don't say a single bad thing about you well. ever like if it's Dan and Mitch they're like hooligans they love them but they're like you know hooligans they, anything about Aiden it's like so they don't have nicest a problem guy ever. they don't have a problem with my particularness no but also I don't think they know you that well like, right so if they knew you they'd be like he's too particular like, that boy they barely see you at all but I'm right. like yeah no I think you just Maybe give off good. good but you, you come off very professional you, you come off as a guy who has his shit together well, which I feel like I don't do lie. that at all mm-hmm. like <laughs> He agreed that, to No, that wasn't me. No, no, no. That wasn't it. me agreeing. That was, like, me, what, what that was me taking in what you were saying. No, like, I just think you come off as a guy who's got his... Like, that's what my mum said. She's like, look, everyone else seemed to have, like, issues constantly in your, like, friendships. You seem to always mm. have, like, issues, which happens all the time. But, like, I feel like we never really have... Considering we were on a show together, mm. apart from things about headphones and sound bites, and <laughs> there was a little bit of beef today that I replied to a comment saying... That you, you uploaded bit... late, and okay, I was like, let's I was move like, on. I didn't upload the didn't upload the thumbnail, so he I just... blamed I blamed you and Blaming you know, me. yeah. But anyway, I got in trouble on the Who's There podcast for saying some swears. You did swear, but naughty. I did a bit of a monologue on it when I said I'm really grateful to Aiden, and I said I was getting to a point where I was like, Aiden doesn't show emotions, and I said Aiden doesn't show shit, and they're like, all right, fuck you, we're moving on, and I was like, okay all right, well, we won't go down that path. And they're like, all right, we're wrapping up the show. And I was like, okay, cool. Mm. Anyway, maybe one day I'll, I'll, I'll speak about my true thoughts about Aiden's emotions, but I guess that day has not come yet. Not not yet. To quote, um, is it Samuel L. Jackson? Not yet. In uh, Revenge of the Sith, correct. Not yet. Not yet. Very cool. All right. Um, shall we start looking back on Doctor Who in 2022? I'd love to. All right. So three. right, let's talk about the, uh, the Jodie Whittaker era first. Mm-hmm. Right, let's talk about... We got three lovely episodes, as you said. Mm-hmm. Um, January 1st, Eve of the Daleks. What did you... Uh, the hype leading into it, and then the, what did you feel What do you feel about it now? Like, just any, any thoughts that come to mind about Eve of the Daleks? Well, I guess, like, I didn't really like the previous two Dalek New Year specials, mm-hmm. but something about this trailer looked very different. It... it in a good way, look low budget, which I is remember, what I wanted. I remember you know? the use of music was quite like the, that New Year's. Yeah, it's the, it's a New Year's like unofficial song, I guess. Yeah. I don't know what it's called, but yeah, like mm. yeah, they played that in it, and the the trailer looked awesome. And I think like a quality thing that comes out of COVID, if you can say it's quality. Mm-hmm. I know the whole thing was shit, but you know, I guess like it's a whole like um, midnight thing. Like yeah. low budget episodes don't mean. It has to be bad mm-hmm. and i think like yes i'm i'm sure we can pick apart this episode like we have with others but i recall just watching it and just being like you know like wow and and and, and loving flux um giving it quite a lot of um i guess again because of kind giving it a lot of uh benefit of the doubt mm-hmm. going into this i was quite worried i was like okay we've got three specials to go am i gonna like this are we gonna go seven for seven because i enjoyed all of them like, i didn't love all the flux but i enjoyed all of them and like can we go seven for seven in a row mm. and we did well the finale is definitely it. rough flux that's, that's yeah rough. You, yeah i know you i think i liked it more than you i recall i actually the vanquishers rough, yeah. like it's pretty rough but again like i think i actually just kind of like enjoy it sure like yeah for some reason like i give this i give season 13 a lot of like slack mm-hmm. but um as for Eve, yeah, I, I love it. I'm actually going to rewatch it um, soon. Yeah, yeah, I watched probably it on New Year's ago. Day. Like, good. It's a great episode to rewatch. I just think it's so much fun. Like, I love it. It, it gives is. me midnight vibes because it's like low budget, small cast. Like, yeah, love it. I also think it looks really nice. It does. Like, it do- the colors they just get the colors really right on it. Like, this yeah. is kind of bluey green hue to it, and it just looks really, really pretty. And also, I, I, I'm sure people think this is a load of crap, but. I actually generally found the Daleks scary in it. I was about to say, I didn't quite find them scary, 
But I think visually they made them a bit quite threatening. Like, like menacing. Something about them. Yeah, like coming down corridors. Yeah, quite dark there's something and... scary about like a Dalek going down a corridor. Yeah. Like... Spooky. And I think like it was quite brutal. Like the cast dies like over and over again. Yeah. And I think... Yeah, no, I, I, I generally like... I said this the other day on the Who's There crossover. I actually think that Eve is probably one of my favorite dot two episodes of all time. Mm, like I, sure. I generally think it's great. Yeah, it is really good fun. It is good fun. Um, yeah, I, I yeah, I, it's for some reason one that just really hit me in the yeah. right spot. You know, it does everything right for me. Um, and and it's got my favorite Jody moment in it, which is the we stand together. Well, like, oh, we try, we fail, we get back up, and we try again. Mm. Like I just think that's just like a great life thing, right? Definitely. Yeah, I I'm glad we um also agree. We kind of like love it the exact same, which I think is great. Mm. I think actually all these 2022 specials we have very similar mm. opinions on, which which does lead us on to April 17th. That, uh, what's, the, what's the word I'm looking for? That fabled day? That The uh, swashbuckling day. Know. Yeah, a, a day full of swashbuckling adventures. Easter. Where Legend of the Sea Devils came out, mm-hmm. which is definitely one of the episodes of all time. Mm. It is um, mixed feelings about Legends of the Sea Devils. Uh... I just think nothing really worked. <laughs> mm. Nah, definitely. Just like being a bit blunt, but yeah, nothing really worked at all. Well, you, what do you think, Connor? I know, you, I know you're not a big fan. Well, yeah, I know I sort of went like seven for seven with Eve. We did not go eight for eight. Yeah, and by the way, like we would have gone nine for nine. We got so close. With power, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is the one I generally just can't really like understand why they did it like mm-hmm. honestly like i would have been fine with a break from eve to power yeah like i generally would have been because you're right i don't see what it does as a story it was fairly obvious that it was meant to be like a a story in the season 13 if COVID didn't happen yeah uh i, I like yeah. it like conceptually like i, I think definitely yeah. like the idea like pirates it's um, a good idea like kind of that, that asian pirate vibe that they mm. had um, and then, like, Sea Devils having their own, like, Sea Devil pirate ship. I thought that stuff's, like, awesome. And some of the stuff does, like, kind of look cool when you see it. You're like, oh, that's a really cool like, idea. Mm. But then, like, it all just kind of happens and you're like, oh, what's going on? There's, like, a scene close to the start where you're on the Sea Devil ship on the top. And it's all gloomy and there's, like, an army of Sea Devils. But, yeah, yeah you're, like, on the very top of the ship. And I think that looks awesome. But then when they go, like, underneath and you're, like, in the Sea Devil lair and it's like, oh, God. Yeah, there's a lot in it that just doesn't work, I think. And it it generally, like, especially, like, I recommend watching it on, like, a high-resolution TV because I watched it on my second time on, like, a 4K TV. Mm-hmm. And that's when it's, like, like blatantly obvious. Like, you can see in, like, John Bishop's hair, like, little flakes of, like, green. Yeah. Like, it it's, not look good. it's, like, it's and, blatantly obvious. And we, we spoke about it on, I, I think, last week with, with um, Troy and, and um, Crispy. But like when you're watching it in in HD, you can see the little CGI, like how they yeah. tried to make the throat move yeah. and, and stuff like that. Because yeah. the actual prosthetics, they couldn't they couldn't do that. Yeah. So yeah, mm. I just wish they didn't do it. To be honest, like I get like it's a long break, but we got a long break now to Doctor Who. Like we're not strange to long know. breaks, but it I just kind of like, sucks. I like, feel like it needed an adventure, but I just wish that it was good. <laughs> yeah, like. But I feel like they, they almost knew, like, it was, like, there's no way they watched that and went, that's good. Mm. Like. There's little things, like, when you see the sea devil go, like, Mario. Goes, boing, yeah, boing, yeah. Onto the ship. And it's just, like, surely, like, something Chris went Chimnall wrong or some producer yeah, was, like, sat wrong. there and was, like, no, that's, like, not right. Like, yeah. we can't do that. So, I, I don't know. I and the fact that it's shorter as well. It's, like, I, I feel like stuff wasn't. I don't care about that. No, but I feel like, no, but I feel like my point is like, I feel like stuff wasn't shot. Like, I feel like something happened. Yeah. Like, I feel like something happened. Like, I, I, I just think there was like, if there's ever an episode where I'm like, shit went on behind the scenes just due to complications, I think it would be that episode. And mm. I don't think we'll hear about it for years. Yeah. But I do think that something, something must have gone wrong. Yeah. Yeah. It is weird. There's, there's just a lot of stuff that doesn't make sense of it. And like I said this a few weeks ago, but like Dan killing four mm. Sea Devils right after Jody gives a speech about not killing it Sea like Devils. It like contradicts its own script. Yeah, it does. Um, like, Yeah, it is the writing that lets it down the most, I think, which is a shame. And I think the directing's weird. I don't... 
like it's pretty basic with a lot of the stuff it does but then there's like some things where it tries to do things differently but i think kind of fails at like there's a face off between a sea devil and jody and they're like rotating around each other and they do it in like first person Mm. and it just doesn't work for me like i i don't know what it was like i maybe it was the lens choice or something like it was a too wide or something but it just it just didn't work for me a lot, a lot of the yeah direction. it's it's like and the pacing is like incredibly off like mm. there is there is no such thing as pacing in this episode like yeah we're talking about our rewatch and um, watch long for the runway bride the other day like the pacing is like so good it's as chaotic as that episode but intentionally like, so it, works. It, just, it works so well and there's little things with legends where like at the start when the sea devil like breaks out of its little marble oh, statue sucks, and then they, they capture it in a net that's just like rocked up there. Yeah, it's like one, two, three. Like literally like there's stuff like that like completely takes you out the episode. Yeah. You know, Such it's as like what I just did then. That's okay. Mm. You know what Chris Shibner would say? Well, it happens. That, yep. Yeah, it does happen. Like, you know, and I, I get it. Like I'm not, we all dealt with COVID and our jobs in our own way. Some of it was good. Some of it was not good. And um, I generally just do think like, and it, and it sucks because I feel like I I have a lot of like fond memories and respect for all these episodes, except for this one, which again, saying that I do still kind of have like fond memories of watching this episode and won't have a problem rewatching it on a rewatch. Mm-hmm. But you know. October 23, Parallel Doctor. Yes. Um, do you remember, I mean, this is like so recent now. But do you remember? A weeks ago. Do you remember all of the drama about like where's the trailer, where's the marketing, and mm-hmm. and I do agree that and, and I was I said it a few times on the show as well. I do agree they left it, they they missed an opportunity to really build it up a lot more in advance. But I think I think they kind of made up for it in the two weeks that they did yeah. market it. Um, but the the thing is, the fandom had just completely forgotten that the moment a trailer came out, everyone just forgot that there was little marketing, and I think it just shows like how a lot of dog two twitter can just be just angry mm. for for a hot second like meaninglessly until they like move on to to what to the next thing right yeah no one hates dog two more than dog two fans that's good uh, what do you think of the power of the doctor connor you know what i think the uh it gave me exactly what i wanted yeah you know and I think a lot of it was going in with the expectations that I had because mm-hmm. I, I went in with, um, I wouldn't say low expectations, but I kept, I think I kept my expectations to the correct level. You right. know, I was like, I'm not going to go too much further than this. My expectations, if I get impressed then that's great. Mm-hmm. I, I generally think it's so fun, rewatchable, a unique regeneration story with a lot of like surprises. Yeah. And just fun little great scenes in between, which again, and the cherry on top at the end is seeing David again. Yeah. With a, by the way, I think a very unique and interesting regeneration, not my favorite by far, but actually a quite a breath of fresh air and an enjoyable regeneration. I think a good ending to Jodie's story. I love the 90 minutes. I like the fact that centenary special I think it's action packed. It's fast. It's just it's fun and again like very rewatchable. Like I want to rewatch mm. it over Christmas at some point. Yeah, yeah. I think it's it's great. Like I don't I don't think it's like extraordinary masterpiece of television in terms of like the plot. Like is just this loose scribble of ideas, right? Mm. But you just forget about it because it is just so fun and it's got like this charm that I just couldn't cannot like. Let go of. It does have a like, charm. It's got this charm, seeing the old doctors and stuff. But even like before then, like the old companions coming back and and like Ashad being there, and and it just looks nice. And the sets are pretty cool. And I don't know, I, it just really works for me in a lot of ways. And I, and I think Jodie gives like probably her best performance in mm. that episode. I, I think obviously like she does. I think the last scene really well. But even just the way like. When, when they're on the space train at the start and she's like storming through with a helmet. I like love that. Like I thought she did such a great like commanding, she had such a commanding presence. Um, and I, yeah, I really rated her there. I literally watched some scenes this week, like mm-hmm. um, old Doctor scenes, companion scenes, uh, master scenes with of Sasha, course, who's that, amazing. that companion scene is just it, fantastic. It, I, I generally... <coughs> sorry? I generally look back at those scenes and think that like I love them. Like I generally, mm. I generally love them. 
Yeah. And I think that in itself is an achievement. Like, it's really... Like, I look back at the Chris Jordan era and feel and, like, disconnected as, like, a Doctor Who fan, disconnected to the Doctor and the characters. But, like, also, at the same time, like, I'm watching these episodes and going, like, wow, I really, I really love these moments. Yeah. And I actually think that... You know, people always say, like, Chris Chibnall wrote this era as a classic fan. Like, it was very classic era. So, of course, when he writes scenes for Davison and McCoy, yeah, they're going to be great. Right, yeah. And I think all those scenes with Tegan and, and Ace and, and uh, Seven and Five, mm. I think, generally, like, I don't think you could have handled those scenes better. I, I, think it's I a, fucking love them. I think it's an era of, like really good moments like the whole era i think just has a lot of scenes throughout it uh, yeah are, are really nice and really special yeah but probably doesn't quite work as, as like a complete piece that's but a really like, good way of putting little it. things like like jack coming back like all those sort of nice little just like cool things and like cool concepts that um one of my favorite scenes is um the ending of uh it takes you away Oh, the, the thanks, granddad, or something. The the sad the sad attack. Whatever he fucking knows is a frog. It's one of oh, favorite- that yes, I can't wait to rewatch that episode. But oh. I, there's a scene where Jody like she walks away and she blows a kiss and it just like mm. something about that scene I actually love. Yeah, the whole frog thing is pretty wild. <laughs> but you know, so that's one of that my favorite up. scenes from the show. Mm. Like I I really do just. Love that scene. So we're going to come back to Doctor Who in 2022 very shortly because Connor has got a little surprise for me. Something Happy obviously. Happy birthday, Aiden. Oh, thank Happy you, sir. Happy birthday. Thank of you. course, we couldn't give you your present because you had COVID. Correct. If you're on the remote show. And then we did the Who's There 50% mm-hmm. crossover. No point doing it then. Mm-hmm. So I'm actually really interested to give you this. There's a big, I'm scared. There's a big backstory. And I feel like. I don't want you to know the backstory until you watch the vlog, but fuck me. Right. <laughs> there is a backstory. To getting the present. like To getting one of them. Right. One of them was fairly easy to get. Mm-hmm. The other one, there's a whole vlog on it. Right, okay. And uh, I think it'll be out before this one, so you can go and watch that. So, okay, anyway. Sure. All right. Sure. Okay, I'm going to start with your normal present. Yep. So this is your normal present, and then Curious. I'll give you the... The crazy one. The crazy one. Cool. All right. All right. Which, by the way, I'll look away for for a second, all right. so as not to be spoiled by the shape of the present. Here is your. First oh, one. that's a peculiar shape, isn't Who, it? What could this be? What could this be? All right. Ooh, do I? I'm shaking it. Do you know what it is? Should I bend it in half? You can. You can bend it. Okay. It might snap. Bend it like Beckham. What could this be on earth? I hope you like this. Oh, we. Do 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 do. <laughs> do, 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 do. This is the back. Oh, is you know this a little bit of a? Oh, that's very cool. A bit of the Stranger Things four. Stranger vinyl. Things that's four. That's very lovely. On a blood red vinyl. Oh, bloody red. Oh, a bit of Kate Bush on there. Yeah, literally. Oh, Your yeah. favorite. How good. So is this? Is this like the songs from the show? Or the it's score? the songs and it's a mix of the score. Okay, so, yeah, that's awesome. It's funny because I try to find. I know you, you got you got the season one and two, haven't you? Oh, uh, I've season. got I've got like season one part two or something like that. That's it. Yeah. And then I was like trying to find the score, but I think this is a mixture between the soundtrack and the score. Yeah, no, that's so very cool. No, I, I wrote, made that big time. Thank you very much. No worries. And like it came in like a you could get the standard ass black one. And I was like, yep, we need to get the red one. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> the red one was a little bit rarer. Yeah, but I found it. No, that's very eventually. Cool. So we got there in the end. That's awesome. Oh, I like that a lot. That's very cool. This next one, you're gonna think it's so. Like, this is going to be so, like, anticlimactic, but there is a hilarious story behind it. Sure. Yep. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm excited to see what it was. I should tell you the story. The story. If you want to watch the oh, story. God. Why do... Oh, I've just got an idea of what this could be. No. And I'm kind of scared. That. Don't think that, because I'm, I'm like, scared. you're not going to guess what it is. <laughs> oh, dude, if... It actually is. I know. No, it. I you know did. it is. <laughs> is this deep breath? <laughs> it's deep breath. This <laughs> and it's not even on Blu-ray. It's the, which or- is the funniest thing. The original release. It's of the original deep when breath. When deep breath was released as a single episode DVD. 
How good is that? Why did I figure that out? I don't even know how I figured that out. That's so funny though. There is a story behind this, which is like literally insane. And yep. um, it's a cautionary tale, mm-hmm. which you will eventually find out. I'm very curious. About the madness of trying to... Joe you know Op, finding a deep breath final is actually a lot harder DVD. than you think. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. finding a deep breath DVD is a lot harder than you think. Yeah. Sure. Right. Yeah, it is. You can't get them on the shelves anymore. They flew off like hot pies. That's all I'll say. Okay? Thank you very much for those, Connor. It's very good. No I'm actually, worries. Um, you can, you can, you can, you can watch the DVD. Obviously, whenever you like. Whenever I like. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't put in the Blu-ray. I'd put in the, no, the DVD. No, well, I know you like that standard ass definition. <laughs> so I'm also very keen. Um, I mean, weirdly, the last like month, I've really gone back into vinyls. Like I always have been. Yes. But like I got through a stage where I was kind of buying them a bit and not really listening to them that much. I've done that. Um, for sure, yeah. But the last month I've listened to like every couple of days I'm spinning a disc. Yeah. And, um, I, I was, love Stranger Things. So. I also started listening to Running Up That Hill again the last couple of days. Uh-huh. So, uh, that was, it was all, it uh, all worked. Yeah, you know, I'm not a huge Stranger Things fan, but mm. even I was like looking at it and I was like, this is sick. And like, it's pretty cool. I don't know if you have a red vinyl, but um, they look fucking awesome. I think I have. I might have, I don't know. I'll have to see what type of red vinyl it is. Red is like, like the coolest color I think you can. Red and blue look sick. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I was like. Thank you very much. And it look, it, the, the packaging looks sick and like it I does. love the, the cover looks awesome. And it does look very cool. Because like you can almost like flip it and it looks like, you know what I mean? Like, so if you flip it the other way, like it looks like that's the, the yeah. start of it. Like it actually the cover looks awesome. That's very cool. Very, very cool. Thank you very much. So I was going to get that from a JB Hi-Fi near Kim's, which was the only one that had the red vinyl in stock. And then mm. I went to our local one and it just happened to have a copy just sitting there. And I didn't even go to get it for you. Perfect. I went to go get something else and I was like, perfect. It's yeah. here. Take it and run. Grabbed it. Yeah. I ran. I didn't pay for it. Just ran out. <laughs> Nah, I pay for it. I got the receipt, all right? Connor, I think it's time that we do what you're, you've you been very excited about doing oh, God. for the last, like, three months, right? Yes. We, uh, yeah, Connor, um, can, do you want right. to just, does the monologue explain what we're about to do? Or uh, to or an extent, I got some prompts. Do you want to, do you want to preface it with what, what, what are we doing? You know, do you want to explain it? Oh, God, this is a lot of pressure. <laughs> do you want to, um, well, <laughs> it doesn't have to be a lot of pressure. This is the 50% tease, okay? Do you, want, the, do you want to sting now? Yeah, go on. Time? All right. Welcome to the very first annual 50% tease. Welcome, everybody. It is a beautiful night here in Perth, Western Australia, where we do the 50% tease. That's right. The only Doctor Who award show, by the way, can I say? There's definitely a lot. Is there? Everyone tries to do little award shows. Every now and then, like do a new YouTuber will do it. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Well, this host. The only 50% has been wrong. Role. Really? They do that? Yes, a lot of. Yeah. But that's fine. That's fine. We can still do it. Great. I didn't know that. I thought we were the only person that did it. Well. <laughs> Great. Well, that's amazing. That is. You no, know, but don't. Don't worry. I got, my, good. I got my prompt cards. Don't worry. Okay, cool. Get prompting. All right. So. Oh, God. Do you want this music still? You can do it. Okay, because it's two minutes long, so we can just keep it going. Perfect. Love it. Perfect. Let's wow, go. this is a lot of pressure. All right. Okay, everyone. What a year. 2022. How did you find it, Aiden? How did you find 2022? 2022? Yeah. A personal life or Doctor Who life? Both. Personal life? Miserable. 2022? Really? Life. Yeah, it was, a, it was a safe year. Wait, safe year in what way? Like. I just didn't... I don't think I achieved many things that I wanted to achieve. You know Didn't I mean? you film a whole film? That was last year, man. We finished it this year. We finished. But you, post. you, you like you distributed it. Yeah, but we still. Yeah, I don't know. I would like to have done more this year in in the film world than I, than I ended up doing. Fair enough. We've got stuff uh, for next year, but this year was a very safe year. I earned money, paid the bills. Yeah. But mm, wasn't that fulfilled in in that area as I'd like to be. Doctor Who wise, this show has been a lot of fun, and um. I think we we had like a a once in a lifetime Doctor Who a period show. with well I was just saying with Russell T Davies coming back right. and, and all the David Tennant filming and stuff it's like that's once in a lifetime right so of course, um, yeah anyways continue your monologue sorry I I probably you wanted like a one sentence answer but well what a year Aiden what yeah it's been pretty miserable yeah. <laughs> We hit 500 subs. We made many friends along the way, and we finally got rid of Chris Chibnall. <laughs> 
Okay, can I just say before I start this shit, don't think anything I'm saying to heart. I'm just joking, mm. okay? It's That's what jokes joke. are. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So, alright. This, this is so much pressure. Come on, you're, you're fine. You're just staring at me. Stop crumbling, let's just, go. I'm not crumbling. I'm not crumbling. <laughs> alright, RTD is back and here's to stay. You know, he's mm-hmm. here to stay. You know, fine. Doctor Who is back in safe hands, arguably. Mm-hmm. Would you say it's back in safe hands? I'd say, yeah. Well, I mean, we'll see it when we get it. But I, uh, uh, there's no one else I would trust any more than I do Russell with Doctor Who. So This podcast is in safe hands. Aiden edits out all of my jokes. Yeah. So if this monologue sucks, which it probably will, mm. you can blame him. Right. Okay. Sure. Because there's a few that might get cut out. Okay. No, that, 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 you know. That scares me already. All right, go. All right, so we had to deal with many things this year. Uh-huh. The death of the queen, uh-huh. the coronavirus, uh-huh. and the fact that Christian was teaching the ITV's next generation of writers. <laughs> These aren't all Christian or jokes, by the way. Okay. <laughs> I, I can't just that. roast others, so I've made fun of our show. Cool. So here we go. Roses are red, bites are blue. Who's there? Doctor Who podcast gets more views than you. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> this same model is so cringe. No, keep it going. I love it. All right. If you More. need proof that you can succeed after you leave film school, Aiden Green has a Doctor Who podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one I told my mum and it didn't go well. No, I think that's very funny. I All like right. self-deprecating shit. <laughs> Xavier called me out for my trade and said it was a waste of time. <laughs> and now that I finished it, I can confirm it was. Just like Jodie's era. <laughs> That's good. I like that. If you ever want to hear a controversial episode on the podcast, <laughs> check out the Kill the Moon with Zave. Oh my god. Keep it going, Con. We have so many fans we had to thank. <laughs> Dylan, Jacob, Vinny, Sagan Canol, who left us on scene. <laughs> <laughs> it's going good. Keep it going. What do John Bowman and the Catholic Church oh have in common? God. Connor, where is this going? Where the fuck is this going? Uh, I can't say that one. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all I've got. I just wrote random jokes. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's all I've got. Oh my goodness. Uh, mate. As far as I, okay, look, I wrote all that today at work and I'm sorry that was a shit one. This is the first 50% piece, so we can learn. Mm-hmm. But are we going to do that true awards now? The actual contenders. Yes, yes. So um, the fifty percenties is yeah award show. So we're doing um, giving out awards for I don't know like favorite moments of the podcast of the year that kind mm. of thing, right? All right. So let, let's get that that music going again. Get hyped for some awards, Connor. How do you want to do it? Do you want to go through yours and then we do mine or like? Bounce yeah, back? we can go one at a time. Cool, cool. All right. <laughs> so we're going to start with best singer on right. the podcast. So the nominees are Vinny. Mm-hmm. Last orders, or Aiden. Vinny and Last the orders score. are the same person. Yeah, that's the thing. I'm saying Vinny from Last orders. Right, I thought you were saying Vinny's one. Last orders. No, I'm saying Vinny from Last orders right. or Aiden. Yeah, who sings the score all the time. Mm-hmm. And I'm afraid the winner, Aiden, is Vinny oh. from Last orders. Well, that's a shame. I'm afraid that is how it goes. Well, look, I... Does anyone like Aiden singing the score? Is, this, is that a is thing? Is this one I just need to clap and go, you can, congratulations, yeah, yeah. I hate you. The camera's on you, the so you better, like, me. Vinny yeah. wins the award. Yep. All right, you got one? Uh, yeah, okay. So, uh, we want to talk about the best guest on the 50 Cent Doctor Who podcast today. Okay, okay. All, right. all right, all right. The nominees are Crispy Pro, Josh Snares, Troy slash Red Arch Alive, and Aiden's Dodgy Audio Skills. <laughs> The winner is Aiden's Dodgy Audio oh, Skills. Oh, wow, everybody. Woo! Yes, I love So you it. won an award. Every second episode has some form of audio problem. You won an award. Is that an audio problem every second episode? <laughs> I think it's been pretty frequently. I must apologize for my um, coughing still, by the way. But COVID was real. Most controversial opinion. Oh, fuck. I already know what one of these is going to be. All right. Go on. Most controversial opinion. Xavier saying the Connor's trade was a waste of time. Dylan saying he didn't like the 100th episode. Mm-hmm. Connor saying that the library two-parter was a waste of time. Mm-hmm. Do you have any contributes or what would you say? Xavier saying that my short film was shit. 
<laughs> I know, did he say it was shit? Or? He did not say that, but that's how I interpreted it. The winner is Dylan saying he didn't like the 100th episode because I yeah. feel like that was a banger and that hit home because I, I like just episode. randomly got a message about it and I was like, damn. Well, so look. congratulations, Dylan. You've won an award. Fantastic. That ties well really well into my next category, which is the best episode of our podcast. Okay. And this actually just isn't funny. This is just, a, oh, okay. this is just nice. I have a nominee. What's yours? The 100th episode. Yeah, definitely. That was mine. That was mine. <laughs> the crossover with Who's There? The uh, Attack of the Sidemen episode, our first episode with Josh With Snares, Snares yep. Um, and the Zygon two-parter with okay, Vinny. Okay, with Vinny. Okay. Which is an episode that I uh, just really liked. And who wins? I didn't decide. I just thought we'd let that one just sit. The 100th episode! Right, yes. Aiden Green and Connor Hannum! Yeah, well, All right, so you got two awards so far. I've only gotten one. Winning. All right, so Vinny's got one. Dylan's got one. Mm-hmm. You've got two. I've got one. Mm-hmm. All right. So, biggest beef. Right, okay. These are big things, okay? Mm-hmm. Biggest beef. Like, you know, we... As Aiden always says, we try and stay away from beef on the show, but, mm-hmm. you know, unfortunately it does happen. We have a lot of shit in the comments, but I think the only contender and winner has to be the Josh Snares and Aiden Green beef, which... That's, that's beef. Unfortunately, we wish it didn't happen this year. Honestly. It's a lot of shit that's happened on Twitter. The- and, uh, you know, it's because Aiden said that Crispy Pro is the nicest uh, Doctor Who YouTuber. Mm. And, um, you know, it started all this beef. So, Aiden, you do reluctantly win, but this is a bit of a steamy. You know, it's like, yeah. it's like boo. Yeah, you, I don't you know. know. I don't know how I feel about that win. Well, you you win from the, the awkward comment of calling Crispy Pro the best Doctor Who YouTuber. Right. Okay. Well... <laughs> <laughs> next up next okay this is my final category okay yeah god uh, the saddest moment on the show okay we've had many times many sad times we've okay. had a few heart to hearts over the years on the podcast okay um there was times where you know your trade was insulted times yeah. where my film was insulted <laughs> and there yeah. was of course the time at the start of the year where i was coming down to the studio with a six pack of beers and i dropped it and it smashed all oh, over the of floor course. went of into course. the pool i was pulling glass out of the pool yes. for weeks yes that is the saddest moment that's of the show. definitely gonna take the saddest moment mm-hmm. i have here the video they got the most hate award right. now i nominated my video that i did on jodie whittaker which was actually just the start of january yeah but you've recently uploaded a video today where you didn't say adric oh. and everyone was hating on you for that i but I don't think I got a hate. I was corrected. What other ones do you think, or do we take the win for the... I reckon the Jody video <laughs> takes the... The Jody video definitely takes it. It takes the W. So... Yeah. Because, like, that shit got so much hate. Well, I, I think because the video is... It's not... Obviously, like, your intention is not for it to be a hateful video, but the title but is, it like, definitely in- why do people hate Jody Whittaker? My my intentions were to get people to think that it to get was... Clicks. It was at you. Well, yeah. yeah. And I remember that was one of our first big videos actually mm-hmm. which i was very proud of but it was also very scary very good video they got the most love award okay okay um is this so this isn't just views this is just people saying that they yeah. liked it okay um that's a good not the hundredth episode not no though that... we got a lot no can i say we did get a lot of love for that oh, we definitely. got a lot of fans calling in sending their messages mm-hmm. uh just recently i don't want to just talk about recently but recently we did the trailer which got a lot, got of, love. A lot of love they yeah, got, got a lot of love a few messages about that and uh yeah even the watch along love even the, the watch along got a lot of yeah. love but um yeah i'd probably say the hundredth episode because we got so many people calling in yeah everyone seemed to love it mm-hmm. except dylan <laughs> <laughs> so yeah yeah i'd say hundred episode so that's yeah. a w for us mm-hmm. all right like that best co-host award oh fuck this is just starting a war isn't it now, this might start a bit of beef. Mm-hmm. I don't watch a lot of Doctor Who podcasts. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know who's on the Blue Box TARDIS podcast, whatever the heck. Was that, was that what it's called? The Big, the Big Blue, Blue Box, Box. podcast. Yep. And who's on that? Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, we know who's there. Mm-hmm. So I thought we'd put it against who's there. Oh, this is just Beef Central. And I'm going to have to say that 50% win the best co host award. Wait, but who? Us, both of us. But it's a joint award. It's a joint award I'll that take we, it. we win. We yeah. win. Okay, sure. come on. We've yeah. got the best, the best co-host. No, I'll take it. You know, I'll take it. Yeah. We're the best co-hosts, you know, like, sorry to start beef in a war. Obviously. But, yeah, hey, well, I now said, we're up against who's there as a war. It's not I, just we're versing Josh. We're also versing who's there now. I said that we were going to be like starting some beef with this shit. Beef, beef, beef. But the final one I got is the best Doctor Who podcast. And I got a right. thing to say about it. Isn't this, this basically case. what you just... 
No, yeah. this is the podcast as a whole, okay? Right, okay. Big Blue Box. Who's heard of them? Uh, Who's there? <laughs> Those dumbasses. We don't like them, okay? <laughs> they just came on. We are the best. Of course, we're in the category. And of course, we win. Right. 50% Sage. win the 50 percent <laughs> It's not biased. That, can you hit us with the... With the Thanks. So we took home basically like the every award. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. I mean, like you know how like someone brings home the the best film, best director, best actor. You know, best picture. We won best picture. You know, maybe we did. You know. Rick the polls a little bit but little you bit. know best yeah. co-host you know we did so, just insult the podcast that gave us a fantastic opportunity <laughs> over the last week it's it's an old timey joke it's good Aiden has to not edit any of this out which by the way is no going to be an issue but I'm happy to leave know. it all in I can't I got the music running in the background it'll be fucked if I edited it what, out what because I said it and you're like I didn't say anything I just yeah, I, didn't make the I just sat here and laughed you I, can come yeah, mate uh, yeah exactly I, I did the nominees and what a fantastic 50% is that they won. That was our award show. The inaugural 50% But you know what I'm going to do next year? What? I'm actually going to like all year write down moments that happen. That would be smart. To make sure that I don't just do it all in my lunch break yeah. and do it tonight. Yeah. So. Well, I wanted to spend more time just on this episode in general, planning it out and getting like all the whole looking back on 2022 thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think doing the 12 days of Christmas and stuff like that, like, I just, like... This has been, like, a full-time job for me, this podcast, the last, like, two or three weeks. Yeah. I, um, and so I, I didn't get around to spending as much time onto it as, as I would have liked. But um, the next part of, of looking back on 2022 is a lot of fun. Um, so we're going to talk about the individual moments, the big announcements we got throughout the year, the stuff that really changed everything for us. Okay. So thank you all for listening to the very first 50 percenties. Yeah. Um, we'll do the music again, because why not? That's, that's enough of that um okay so right let's look at them them big moments right mm-hmm. shall we do it let's do it uh okay timeline yep very quiet first four months of the year yep okay january to april very quiet except for eve yeah but in terms of like just kind of news yeah and, and yep, stuff. definitely yeah 8th of may is sort of our big first thing yep shooty gatwa is announced as the next doctor can you believe that was the 8th of May. Wow, really? 8th of May, mate. I went and checked. All, all of this I've gone and got the right dates for. That seems like... Um, I feel like it was like... Not that long ago we found like out. Like July, August, like September. Wow, 8th like, of yeah. May? Mm-hmm. Holy shit, okay. It is crazy, right? All right. Um, 16th of May. David Tennant and Catherine Tate were announced to return. Okay, yeah. So, these big That moments, was May? T- t- Tying that hell? in with this and then, and then we'll talk about it a bit. 17th of May, Yasmin Finney is announced... As uh, uh, as Rose. Okay. Yep. Th- those three announcements with all within eight days of each other. That is insane. Do you, uh, reflecting on that, how do you feel? I just think Russell was like a madman. You know, he is. Like the thing with Russ is like you know when you find out information, like you feel like you're going to be in the dark for weeks about other stuff, and then like he just like hits you and like bombards you with all mm-hmm. this stuff, and like some could argue like you could space it out better, but also filming has to be done. You mm-hmm. know. Uh, uh, Bernie Cribbins and like Sylvia and stuff they weren't confirmed and that all got leaked through set picks yeah. so that's what happens and, and Rachel yeah Rachel like you know there. so that was what happens when you don't release it early but yeah no it was like I mean what an exciting I think this is the first time in a while where I've just been like so excited to be a Doctor Who fan definitely you know? and that's what I mean by like like it's gonna be great to see season 14 15 16 being shot mm. but this this just one year in particular I just I think was just so special seeing, you know, the doctor that we grew up with back filming with Catherine Tate, mm. like with, with Russell writing it, like what a special little like yeah. time to see that all being shot, which does yeah. bring me to uh, May to July, 60th anniversary being filmed. Uh, we saw location shoots in Camden, Bristol, the Beep the Meat stuff on location. Yep. Um, and yeah, we saw saw Bernard and, and Sylvia and that all, all being back, mm-hmm. which was, which was, the most exciting time of the year i think there was a period where every day because obviously the way that time works is yeah. that days for in the uk show. are night times in australia 
So like we would wake up each morning and just the first thing you do was just excitedly check Twitter. Yeah. And you just see all that these Bristol photos. film and stuff is like again like probably one of the most exciting times. The I've Camden ever had. was so the first location stuff was in Camden and that's right. what I was most excited for because right. like that's when we first saw Burner back. Right. It was when we saw David's costume. Yes. You know, that stuff was great. And then the Bristol stuff was great because we were just seeing scope. And yeah. Like all this massive Plus, so good friends of the show, Dylan and Vinny, got to go and see it, which is also lovely to hear. Fantastic. So, you good know, if we were there, we would we would 100% have done that. So. Yeah. That was, the, yeah, that, that stuff was just huge. I and mean, it's so cool to finally start to see little shots from that in that teaser. And yeah, definitely. I wonder when we'll get the first trailer. Oh, God. I don't think till May, mm. <laughs> even that stretching it. Yeah, but. I don't. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know how they're going to play it. The more I get into marketing, the more I enjoy it and, uh, you know, study it. I think it's like strategically done. And the way that the power of the doctor was handled and obviously Russell's going to have a different grasp on it, but also it's still the same BBC, but we've mm-hmm. got the Disney plus now. And I don't know. I feel like, I feel like the teaser they gave us, despite it being 10 seconds, gave us like, quite a lot about showing us anything yeah like it was almost enough to keep us going for a while i wouldn't mind i don't know star wars a lot of the time i, I think they do their marketing quite good for mm. star wars like and and what they tend their to do their teasers are dope they do like a tiny teaser like what we just got mm. um and then quite often the next thing you'll see will be a like five minute two to five minute behind the scenes feature at and like you'll get one or two new shots but mm. most of it is just like interviews of actors and stuff yeah and you that's enough to get me fucking oh definitely doing a backflip man like i love that you stuff. get that and then like two months later you get like a big trailer and then like three weeks out you'll get like the final dude big trailer. rachel bts just being like oh yeah oh my so god good. It, it, yeah it's, it's so good to be working with peter capaldi again <laughs> yeah uh, uh, can i say that <laughs> dude, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like can we cut that out can, can, can we? is that gonna be cut like some like bbc interns like that's staying in <laughs> like that that's what i mean though like the exciting thing is is like I was trying about this the other night like the exciting thing is like we even have like a shot of like Bernard Cribbins getting like you know pushed into the TARDIS and like that's great like David like sprinting with him but that 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 shows that like he does have like scenes that they shot in like mm. a studio like mm. so there is going to be some stuff that we have not seen and that's movie magic baby, can I just say you know? 8.32pm mm-hmm. on a Friday night yeah old bloody mate down the yeah, road he um, he's got the angle grinder out Again. Yeah, well, I went to take a Waz in the garden and I saw he was, like, doing, like, a must like be, like, a DIY, a do-it-yourself project with his, like, son. Right. And, uh, yeah, but there is definitely a, um, there's definitely, like, a curfew for tools. Like, yeah, I think it's, like, seven or something. Uh, it's Yeah, and then, you, and then you can't start until a certain time. Like six or something. I think it's, like, like six. Yeah. 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 But should, he should lost just the, the cops? Every we, time we, we record, I, like... I didn't want to say it because uh, I'm sure everyone that heard this heard the Who's There episode where we did have a slight audio problem. And I sort of sent that to Troy and was like, oh, like, oh, like I'm sorry. Like, I don't know if there's anything you can do with, with the sound that we have. Um, and like I was like, I can't message him about the angle grinder as well. I was like, surely he'll just figure that out when he listens to it. Right. It was, and it was only for like two minutes that it was going off. But this guy, whenever we record an episode, just decides to whip out some machinery. I love that kind of stuff. Like I love the... Um the law of like a podcast like there's a guy who whips out the angle grinder there's aiden's neighbors who hate him it's all world building right it's like world building you know mm-hmm. and i think 50 percent universe also the the only time they've ever seen the outside well they saw a shot of the but of us facing the doors but the only time they've seen the outside was in the trailer in the trailer yeah that's so right. you know we're, we're building the law a little bit we're world building here um, all right, this this is one that that I I really do hate to say, but yeah. um, July twenty seventh, which was the day that we unfortunately lost Bernard Crims, passed away at yes. the jolly fantastic age of ninety three. Yeah. Um, a few days prior on the twenty fourth, we also lost David Warner, who had played the Doctor in some big finish. Like, I think that's right. Mm-hmm. Um, and then was also in Cold War, um, which yeah sucked because he was such a lovable character in Cold War, but but Bernard obviously being such a big part of of the David Tennant era and knowing that he's coming back, um, that, yeah, that, that hit hard. Right. And I recently rewatched the end of time, um, a couple of days ago and like, geez, like Mm -hmm. it's so lovely seeing his scenes, but you, you can't help but be like, fuck, like I miss that. I miss that. He's, he's not with us anymore. And, and there's like a scene with the silver cloak and he's on the bus and like mini, mini, is it mini Hooper or mini Cooper? 
It's uh, uh, Minnie the Menace. Minnie the Menace, yes. yeah. He's yes. on there with her and you can't help but be like, damn, these two amazing actors are both no longer with us now. Yeah. And, and it's just so... There's a very heartbreaking news to get. I think we're, I think the 60th is definitely going to be um, dedicated to Bernard. Yeah, they've got to have some tribute, yeah. I think we strangely had a goodbye to Bernard without knowing it with the screening of the Dalek movies. And yeah, because that was like a week before, right? Yeah, so the second one, which is Dalek... Invasion of Earth. Invasion of Earth. Yeah. And I feel like we um, had like this goodbye to this character and this actor without even knowing it because he sadly passed Yeah. Uh, like a week later. Yeah. Uh, but it's what's crazy as well, I think, it was uh, like only like a month or so after they have been filming the 60th. And I know very shortly after the 60th, um, he had to go to hospital. Yeah. And they also did some reshoots after, which may yeah. have been some scenes where he may or may not know. have been in. We don't know. So there's also that. Um, I, don't, I don't like to bring that stuff up as, as if it was like, you know, his death was an inconvenience. But, you know, that's just a thing to bring up. But yeah. Um, yeah. But the fact that he's in it is like, I think. Um, it's going to be very special. Yeah. Even like, even the fact that like, I don't, that bloody angle grinder, man. He loves it, doesn't he? He does. It. He's just What's like, he, it looked like he was building like a go-kart. I couldn't like, explain what it was. 8.30 like, it PM, just, time to get to work. It just looked like a go-kart. Silly man. Silly man. I'll just say this, like my parents love the Dot 2 era with David Tennant. And, uh, you know, I've mentioned that he's coming back and Donna's coming back and the whole family is coming back. And, you know, I know they love Wilfred as a character. Yeah. And I think that, you know, a lot of people love him as a character. And I think it's going to be interesting to see it for the last time. But also, like, incredibly... It's going to be interesting watching it, knowing that's his last performance ever, you know? Yeah, definitely. But yeah, you're right. He has such an impact on the show. He does. You it's know? a very heartwarming presence, which is a, it's a very nice segue into... Um, I don't have the exact dates on here because I actually forgot to put it on here, but you, you did jog my memory. The Dalek movies got their 4K remaster and cinema Yeah, movies. we went to go to the movies to go see it, which was awesome. Which is great. And and yeah, last week, or whenever we did the Runaway Bride episode, we said that the last time we watched Doctor Who together was oh, of course, in 2018, we did it. Yeah, we did we it. actually we did it. the movies. Yeah, I remember being very depressed then we went to go see those, but I... Really? Yeah, I was, I was at TAFE. I was like... Uh, I remember you saying something, yeah. I feel like I relate to you when you said this year was shit. I generally think this has been, like, one of the worst years ever. Right. Like, it just sucked. Like, I feel like it sucked. Mm-hmm. Um, and, like, I think life was hitting me badly that day. I just started a two-week course on that day, and I was really busy. And mm-hmm. But I had to film this vlog, and I said this to my partner last night. I believe in the... I kind of want to get it tattooed on me. The show goes on. Right. To my detriment almost mm-hmm. the show goes on you cool. know and i always believe that as entertainers you've got to go and put on performance mm. no matter how what you're feeling that's your job as an entertainer and that night i did that but we had such a great time we went to we an did. irish pub before mm-hmm. got some food yep chilled out that was beers. great yeah it was it was such a good time and we got to watch the dalek movies back to back and yeah that was a great time my um, so glad we did it one of my the funniest things like i brought this up to nick the other day was we got into the movies and like you uh, I bought like a beer at the movies and mm-hmm. you brought Coke. And we sat down and I was like, oh, yeah. why'd you buy a Coke? And you're like, oh, don't worry. And then, <laughs> and then I see you pulling out like a whiskey flask from, from yes. your jacket and pouring it into your Coke. I think I cut that out of the vlog. I might have oh, really? kept it. I can't remember. But yeah, this is what I do. I um I buy like large Cokes and bring in like a, like a five to six shot of whiskey mm. in like a little flask or like in a bottle. Yeah. And then we go to the toilets and take a big gulp. Mm-hmm. And then like to get the, the, the soda or the soda pop down. And yeah. then you can have room to put in the... Very clever. Yeah, that's why I did it. The, it's a way to save on... Um, you can drink in like normal screeners and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's that's, bad. No, that's fine. Our local cinemas uh, uh, can let you buy beers to walk in with now very pricey nice. though that's the problem yeah a bit of fun though yeah but like I why do that when you can sneak in <laughs> that's booze? fair like that's fair they're so bad on business right now you should be glad i'm even coming in and oh if i God. have to sneak in alcohol <laughs> i went like the, the first night that they introduced being able to buy beers to take into normal screenings i, I went that. and they didn't like advertise it or anything 
but me and my mates, we would just happen to go to a movie that night. And it was a quiet night. It was like a Thursday night or something. And like, we just saw this sign and we're like, fuck yeah. And the staff like did not know what they were doing. And it was really funny. Like we, we just kind of laughed with them because they'd clearly like just done some online training course about serving alcohol. Or yeah. Something. They have to have like, um, I've seen it say. at Grand, like, yeah, they, they only have like at the time, like normally like one person who can actually serve alcohol. the actual booze. Yeah. And yeah, it's always interesting. Yeah. So yeah. And yeah, they gave us it in like weird cups that belly filled. Like they had to like give us two cups for it. It was very silly. But Did was... I tell you the time Kim gave a envelope to the women behind the counter? What? So uh, it was our anniversary. We went to go see Elvis. Mm-hmm. Um, and Kim gave me like a load of presents and envelopes with like things in it. Like a night in the hotel, a um, stay at so and so. And then one was an escape room. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because we went up to go get a drink. And I got one. I got her one. And we're about to <laughs> we're about to walk away. And Kim was like, um, you know, do you need to go to the toilet? And I was like, yeah, I kind of need to go to the toilet. She's like, maybe go to the toilet. I was like, yeah, before I go, I'll go get myself another drink. It's like, no, no, go to the toilet first. And I was like, no, no, I come on. I need Very another sense. drink. Yeah. So I went and got a drink. And then, like, I went to the toilet. We sat down. And then Kim was like, can you go get me another drink? And I was like, the, the, like, the trailer's playing. I was like, look, babe, like, you know, the movie's about to start, like we can like share this one <laughs> it's like no no i need you to go get me another drink i was like what is this girl's obsession with getting another drink <laughs> and i went out to go get another drink and i was like other oh, pink gin please and then when the woman gave me the pink gin she gave me an envelope and i was like this is why she was trying yeah. to get me to go so she gave me That's the envelope really cool. and then when i opened the popcorn there was an envelope in there as well and i was like this is so cute that's awesome yeah that's it's so really cool that is very cool but um I'm glad it was an envelope in the popcorn and not another mysterious surprise. The classic popcorn trick. Oh, with the... Penis. Yeah, the penis. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah. Do you know what's so funny though? Like, because I'd bought so much booze, I was like, I'm going to take my jump. I said this to Kim, I was like, I'm going to take my jumper off so the girl doesn't recognize me because she's probably not going to serve me because I bought so much booze tonight for us. Mm. So she gave a description of me where I'm this jumper and I ripped it off and said, I'm going to try and look nothing like me. <laughs> but somehow she did so funnily she was like and i was like oh my god thank you and i took it and i was like but it was very cute yeah. but yeah that was when we were buying booze at the uh local cinema very cool that's a, that was a it's, nice little segue wasn't it nice it's fun to uh drink booze at the cinema sometimes it is good it is good it is good you do gold the the gold class gold lounge the fancy I did. Cinema quite uh, a lot i, I don't, don't really like it i don't that go much, much anymore yeah. To the cinema in general, unfortunately. I, I want to go I want to go more. It's quite a few movies I want to go see, but it's just like it's just fine the time and I do want to support the cinema more. I know I haven't really done yeah. that this year. That's what New Year's resolutions for, I guess. That's sort of been my biggest thing like the last six months has sort of been like trying to get there a lot and, and support it as much as I How can. How did you find that movie with uh Timothy Charmaine? Uh um Is it called Bones and All? Bones and All, yeah. Dude. I did not know that movie was about cannibals. Yes, yeah, about cannibals, yeah. And I like five minutes in, it's like lovely bit of a young adult thing which is very my vibe and the next thing i know she just bites this chick's thumb off and i'm like fuck that's what i'm in for so you didn't know that i didn't know it was about cannibals what the fuck and i didn't really know what i was getting myself into at all like it was one of those ones where i'd heard like decent ist reviews and i was like yeah i'll just go see that you know um on my own had a morning off so i went and watched it and yeah, I, I thought it was really good. I, I planned on making a, a video essay. Oops. I planned on making a video essay because I, for my personal YouTube channel, I mm-hmm. post video essays m- almost every week. I was going to say, you, you should promote that on here. You never say it. Well, uh, if you want to hear more from yeah, me, because you don't get election. enough of me here. Yeah, I'll link it down below. Um, I'm Aiden Green on YouTube and I, I do, yeah, uh, film and TV uh, talks really. And um, yeah, I put a, a lot more effort into that in terms of like actually writing a script and, and stuff to bounce off of. Um, but I, I'm planning on making a video essay of it, but I just watched it and I was like, oh, I just thought it was really good. Like I, I didn't have anything else more to say about it, you know? Yeah, and right. I really wanted to. Like my plan was the morning I'll watch it and the afternoon I'll write and shoot a video essay. It seemed like an interesting choice for Timothy to pick. Yeah, he, he's really good in it though. Like everything about it is just like, yeah, it's really good. Yeah, it just yeah. seemed like, because he's he's getting like offers left, right and center. Like he's yeah. doing like Willy Wonka. Really Wonka. Yeah, and he does this like almost like indie-esque film. Yeah. That looked like, I don't know, but yeah. good for him. Yeah, good for him. Yeah, it's everything's just really good about it. It doesn't do anything mind-bogglingly fantastic. Like, like there's no nothing I, new, but it's just really good. What do you want to talk about the Guardian special in our Christmas episode? 
Yeah, well, yeah, we can okay. do that. That's a good idea. Because I got a controversial opinion about that. Right, you didn't like it? No. Okay. Interesting. How bad is that? Yeah, I, yeah. I think you're a grumpy Marvel hater. No, I knew you were going to say that. Oh. No, because like, I heard you liked it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, I'm going to... And I heard everyone like it, but I was like, I just didn't like it. That's fair enough. I'm not a grumpy Marvel hater. I you are, though. I wouldn't say that. You are. I when did you last that. like a Marvel thing? And I'm not saying you have to. I'm um, just saying... Uh... Um, no, yeah. I don't know actually. Uh, oh, 2008 like, Iron Man was pretty good. I like, I like, um, I liked uh, Hawkeye and I liked um, right. half of One Division, right? Um, I don't know, like, uh, there were parts of Monoverse of Madness I liked, a lot of nah, it I didn't I like. I, didn't. I thought it, most of it was trash, Not but there's part of the it. Sam Raimi bits I liked. Um, oh, I forget that it was by Sam Raimi. Uh, no, but I yeah, was, no, I haven't I seen everything... Black Panther or anything. Like, yeah, I the the thing that the thing that about um, Guardians is like with the Vol Three. I feel like that's like my departure from Marvel, and I feel like I know it's it's James Gunn's departure from Marvel, and mm-hmm. I feel like it's the end of a lot of these characters. Mm-hmm. So I kind of feel like when I go and see that movie, this is like the end of an era for me as well. Mm-hmm. So that's probably the last one I'm ever going to go pay and see. So right. yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to make a bit of a, a stance where I'm like. We shouldn't support trash. I, I do that. I 100% do that. And I only yeah. go to the ones now that have like stuff that I think looks good. Mm. Because I, I kind of think it's not a good idea to just say, I'm not going to watch any of these movies anymore. Mm. Like, like you can do that 100%. But mm. I think like if a movie, if a trailer looks good, then 100% yeah. go. Because then you want to fund the movies that they get right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they make more of that kind of thing. I don't know. Look, I, look I'm a I'm a salty hater. Like, you know, you just I, admit I admit it. it. No, yeah. I admit it. I admit it. But like it what I think my my whole mindset at that is that like it actually does kind of break my heart that like, especially this year, um, the only movies that are like coming out from the Thanksgiving period until like late Jan is like the only big movies are Black Panther and Avatar and they're mm-hmm. just Disney and I'm like there are all these small movies that I hear are great and like I like to root for the underdog like I don't want Disney who by the way now owns Doctor Who yeah <laughs> um, I don't like them owning the box office and I, I, I yeah. think it's I think we should support the smaller movies and that's what upsets me the most because I, I want to care for the underdog you know no, definitely but like that's like I don't know you my thing is that I, I just want to see as much as possible to be honest but I, I don't want to fund yeah the big dogs that I don't think are doing it for the right reasons um, yeah but like I'll, I'll watch Avatar um, because I think I'll go see Avatar it's a big cultural thing and yeah. there's no point on like missing out on that kind of thing just for, for uh, something like that but, but a, a big thing the pandemic um, normalised is um, you know straight to streaming yeah like after I think it's like two and a bit months, maybe three months. Like you can watch these movies that were at the cinema for mm-hmm. free. If you buy like Disney plus, yeah. like it's actually pretty crazy. Yeah. And, um, I think that's a big thing that is becoming more normalized. I mean, even like, even like look at Netflix doing it with, um, with knives out, like yeah. fans who want to go see it in the field, can go see it or like, the big thing nowadays is everyone is saying, I'll wait for it to come on streaming. Yeah. Which is a huge thing, which makes sense when it comes to, um, our local cinemas, uh, two, two, uh, the branches just went under, like, you know, and it makes sense when there's like, you know, you have the option now to be like, I kind of want to see it. I don't know if I, if you have like a family of four, that's like expensive. Yeah, like I could just wait a couple of months to see it on streaming. You know, mm-hmm. like it has to actually entice you enough to go and see it, and yeah. that's the big thing these days. You know, like it's it's is it worth it taking the whole family out to go and see a movie? Well, the, the, there is a lot of uh, small scale movies that have been out in the UK for a while that I've been keen for. Uh, January, there's a lot coming out, um, so I'll sort of maybe throw a few of them your is way. It Emily, yeah, Emily comes out uh, I saw January. That most, I think listed 12th. on. Um, Listed on Grand Cinema. Um, the Banshees of Inner Sharon comes out December 20... I think it's Boxing Day, I think it comes out. That's um, with uh, Colin Farrell, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. And uh, Mad Eye. Yeah. The, yeah. Mm. It's the director of In Bruges. I'm really, really keen to see that. In Bruges, sorry. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and then I think Living comes out in, in March, which is um, Bill Nye and... That's right. Amy Atwell. Uh, the, the girl, she's in sex education. Um. Amy Atwill, the the blonde That's girl. That's Emily. 
No, 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 no. This is oh, a film called Living. Right, um, right. She, she plays like the the blonde girl yes, in Sex Education. Yes, 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 yes. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, all those movies look really great. And and there's a movie called After Sun that has just destroyed the the uh, British Film Festival, um, which is just apparently fantastic. And I'm really keen for that. Do you know what I saw this week? Um, YouTubers I really love and follow for years. So I think are one of the best craze on YouTube. Raka Raka. Do you know them? Oh, yeah. I, I don't subscribe to them anymore, but when I was a kid, I was. Their film just made to Sundance. Which really? Is what film, what's it called? Uh, fuck me. I know this. Um, shit, I know this, but I, I've been following them for years. I love them. I think they're like some of the best like creators on YouTube. Right. And like they're Australian live in Adelaide, where Snares is from. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Dead Set, like they are like some of the best creators on YouTube. And like, oh, it's called Talk To Me. That's it. Talk right, To Me. Right, okay. Yeah. And awesome. their film... Their first like proper directorial debut, uh-huh. and they wrote it. The Racker Brothers, their their film made the Sundance, which I think is like amazing. That's really cool. Good uh, on them. Yeah, no, nah, it's it's sick, man. So anyway, like it kind of just shows <laughs> that like you know we do have faith in the future of creators and stuff and all yeah. that. But yeah, 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 yeah. Just uh, don't be blinded by all the big stuff and and jump on and watch the little stuff. I guess is the the moral of this. I thing. always have a golden new year I'm able to do it which is like go to the movies once a week and I really want to do that next week uh, sorry next, next year, year. Like, <laughs> you'll do it next week for one week <laughs> I'll do it for one week yeah I, I, but I really want to do that cool um, alright October 23rd uh, David Tennant becomes the 14th Doctor <laughs> um, we sure get did. our first 60th anniversary teaser which is all very cool stuff all this stuff we can just kind of fly through because it's all very recent yeah um but october 25th we've got the new logo and the news about the disney plus deal two days after jody's final episode mm-hmm. and november 19th millie gibson joins doctor who and yep. december 5th season 14 begins filming yeah wow i mean it was like a slow start to the year but we definitely got there in the end yeah yeah well i, I think we were still were sort of feeling the the repercussions of the covidness mm. and um and the the three episodes we got this year definitely will. God knows what we're gonna say of that. next year, huh? We've got that's what we're gonna say next year. Yeah, we'll be talking about well four episodes, I assume, by the end. of Yeah, the so year. we don't know if like by this time next year we'll have the special. If it'll be in like a couple of days, shoot his first episode, like the Christmas special. Yeah. yeah, mysterious, 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 mysterious. It is a bit, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, well, this was a fun little romp of a... Of a yeah, sp- we of definitely... A um, I said this to Aiden, I was like, you know, we definitely have, like, somehow made it to... I guess our next episode is... Podcast Doctor episode Mysterio. Is Mysterio, which is yeah. the last one of the year. Mm-hmm. So we somehow made it to the end of the year, and we did it, like, for, like, what, two months without reviewing a Doctor episode? Yeah, we well, stalled from, for two months. From the modern era. Yeah. Wow. We're good. Well, you, you've always said, I'm scared, Aiden. What are we going to do when we run out of episodes to review? And I think we just proved that it is oh, possible. Oh, no, definitely. But it, it, it does feel like... It, it feels like a, a, a safety net that we have, mm. depending if we want to do, like, a rewatch, like, three to four seasons to fall back on, you know? Yeah. Well, well, we'll do, like, a Flux rewatch and do, like, probably a re- retrospective on, like... Hmm. flux and stuff but like yeah basically like yeah three seasons of reviews and then we'll have to do and Sarah Jane and stuff and our plan is by, Torchwood. by the 60th we are all caught up on our reviews for New Who oh we'll get so there easily next year we're doing series 10 11 12 it, there's going to be less faffing around between series we're going to go back to what we do best mm-hmm. and what this podcast always was from the start and we're going to finish off reviewing the show which I think is going to be uh, once we finish Timeless Children, which is the final episode that we'll be doing um, of the podcast ever. No, no, the final episode of Doctor Who that we'll have left to review from New Who. We got cancelled. Um, that will be like a, can you believe we've reviewed every episode of, Doc- of New Who moment, right? I, I, I think that's an insane achievement. It will honest. be. I don't know like when we started this podcast where I thought we would go with it. You know, mm. like I don't know. I don't think I ever would have thought like, oh, we would have done all 13 seasons plus God knows how many bonus episodes and stuff, you know? Um, and then it was just like every, we'd start a new season. I'd be like, oh yeah, we're probably going to make it to season three. And then I'd be like, finish season three. I'd be like, okay, yeah, we'll probably finish season four. And it was yeah. just like every, every few months we just start a new season. And it was like, how far is this going to go? And it just kept going. I think and, that's and- the beauty about the show. I think it constantly has like surprises for us. Yeah. God knows what's in store next year. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, next year's 10, 10k. By this time next year, 10k. That's your goal. 
Yeah, that's a huge goal. I don't think so. I think I think we need well, is, but... nine thousand five hundred more subscribers to get there. Yeah, but I think yeah, I think we can get there. Get fifty percent to ten k by Jan first, twenty twenty four. We have all goal. year to work on it, and also we're gonna like try and implement live shows at some point. We're gonna do everything we which can. Which YouTube absolutely loves. I think. And froths, I apparently. think. Well, okay, this is a good uh, topic for like retrospective looking back on the year. I mm-hmm. think one thing that I really learned this year. Yeah is the type of thing that that does well. Because doing the normal episodes don't necessarily do well, and it's, so it's important that we do do bits that are like looking to the future and, you know, mm-hmm. uh, theory video, theory podcasts for RCD2 and stuff like that. So still incorporating that into, like, the reviews and, mm. and stuff like that. But also, um, fuck, what was my main point? I had a really good point, and now I've lost it, and it's just really sad, isn't it? Um, fuck. That's going to piss me off. Wow. Well, I guess that's this podcast summed up, right? That's good. Yeah. That's that. Didn't have, didn't remember it in that little short break. Nope. Wow. No, I'm, uh, I'm, yeah. Nope. I don't, I don't know what my last, wow, point was there. Oh, no, 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 no. I got it. I've got it. I've got it. Perfect. So, so what I was going to say was there is, we started to do things this year that we've said we wanted to do from the start of the show. Mm-hmm. And we probably took too long to start to do these things. And that's why for so long, we well, probably well, were in sort of the oh, same guess. spot. Getting guests on from the Who community, reaching yeah. out to people like Crispy and Josh. And, it was and, scary. And we didn't even talk to those people. Like, Definitely, yeah. At the beginning of the year. It was like, I remember trying to reach out to like Josh and Crispy for the 100 episode and being like terrified. We hadn't said a single word to each other. So I think next year has got to be, whilst sticking to our guns and reviewing every week, it's got to be also about spreading those wings and and getting more and more members of the community onto the show whoever's willing i've got plans don't worry you got plans con has got plans yeah definitely yeah very cool should we wrap there sure cool yes uh, it feels like we're like ending for the year but we, we've still got one more episode that we're filming in one three more. days time one more is that a monday we're filming on monday okay cool yep i don't i didn't know that let's go well it's got to come out on Thursday or Friday, so yeah, we've got to film on Monday. The eggnog is coming out on Monday. Yes, that'll be so Aiden's the very next favorite. Next, Aiden hates eggnog. The next episode of the podcast will be our annual Christmas spectacular. Um, lot of no, there's not a lot of surprises. It's going to be a good episode though. There is a surprise. Is there not a lot of surprise? Well, we got gifts for each other. Yes, we do. We do. Is that a Monday? Fuck! I need to film my last video for. Mm. And there'll be, yeah, another lovely surprise. That will come out on, I think, Thursday or Friday, whatever day the 22nd of December is. And, uh, yeah, that'll be your big festive That's Thursday, finale yeah. for us and our final uh, upload of the year, mm. won't it? That's kind of sad and sweet. Yeah. Happy who year. It, and it, it will be a relief. I'm, I'm ready to take a, take a break and go on holiday because <laughs> it really has... Well, you are going on holiday for, like... That's what I mean. Like, like a month. Because if you count the week weeks. that we're gone for... Right. You got like a month off. You're gonna be. I am you're gonna be gonna come back. Doing this twelve days of Christmas has been like like a lot of work. Yeah, and it's good. I'm happy we did it and stuff. Um, but also like doing all the thumbnailing and, and like just throughout like the last like six months where we have been uploading a lot. Like it, it has been like a lot of like night work and doing that kind of stuff, yeah. which I do love. But I am definitely looking forward to just resetting. So you know? actually, your episode. The next episode will be your last for a while as well. Yeah, I'll be disappearing for for until till the end of Jan. Three weeks. Yeah. So yeah, but hey, that'll be exciting, and I'm sure you guys have had enough of me because I'm pedantic apparently and too peculiar, too particular. Sorry, I've been Aiden. I've been Connor. I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode. This was definitely a lot more of like a more kind of personal, just us chatting less. We're depressed, folks. What can you? What can you? What can you say? Less Doctor Who. Well, there was a lot of Doctor Who talk, but it, it was more of like a, just me and you having a good time kind yeah. of episode. So yeah, for sure. Um, this is the ones for you guys that are here for the fifty percent that isn't Doctor Who. This is one of those. Which is Eddie one. Let's be real. Of course. Um, thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you in a few days for our Christmas spectacular. It's Aiden. You're on. You're on King. Thank God it's podcast. We're doing the 50 percenties. Doing the 50 percenties. I actually don't know the last time that I sung the outro the way we're supposed to.
Because every episode, I think for the past like three months... That we get it wrong or... No, you sing it right, but I change the lyrics to what we're talking about every time. I feel like even I don't know, I feel like... um, Sometimes I say we're doing Doctor Who reviews or they're doing. It's like, I don't know what is right. And sometimes you say we, sometimes we're saying they. I feel like we never say it the same. As much as I love doing these post credit scenes, Connor... I really need a piss. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna walk out. We'll saw fight. And we'll and yes, let's right. do it right here on camera on your carpet. Yes, bro, you left me fucking hanging for a while. And then we lick it. Yes, you will be hanging if <laughs> <laughs> if we do the sword fight. <laughs>